to another MLM horror story video. If you have an MLM horror story that you want to share with me, whether you were in an MLM or your family member was in one, or you just had an interaction with an MLM hun and you want to share it with me, I have my email down below. All that I request from you is that when you send me the email in the description box or the subject line of the email, just make sure to put MLM horror story and you can even add what MLM it is that you are sending me a horror story about. So with that being said, grab your coffee, grab your water. Bitch gonna need a lot of water. She is a parched. So yeah, let's get into today's. I also want to mention if I haven't read your horror story yet, you can message me on Instagram and let me know where you sent it. I have a couple hundred to get through. So definitely bear with me because one day you just have to keep watching. One day I'm going to tell your story. So let's just get into it. So this one says Monate rep preying on single mothers and hasn't even given birth yet. Okay. And she got a lot of screenshots. Y'all know I love screenshots. So see this person even put that in the description line. Like she gave it a title and I love that. It tells me what I can expect from, you know, reading it. So my girl said, Monet rep preying on single mothers and hasn't even given birth and free caddy screenshots included. Hey Deanna, this Monet rep just got her free Cadillac. And on top of having 170 plus in her downline and growing, she's praying towards single mothers and she hasn't even given birth yet. According to her, she'll give birth to her son in December and trade her car and car payment for a luxury vehicle that Monet will pay for. She found out she was pregnant at five months, so two months ago, and is preying on single mom. She got separated from her husband two months later, found out she is pregnant. Who's to say she'll be alone in this? Who's to say the father won't provide? After all, he didn't know about her being pregnant when they were separated. It's all a bunch of lies and I'm tired of seeing it. Hopefully you can include this in a video reaction because I'm shocked and disgusted. Attached her screenshot showing when she discovered she was pregnant in August and promoted being a single mother in front of her new caddy as well as promoting the best CBD oil on her pregnant belly. And she announced the first person on her team that qualified for the free trip to Vegas. So what I'm getting is this person, this woman is pregnant. And before she even knew she was pregnant, she and her spouse split up. And now she is using that, the fact that she's pregnant, she's gonna be a single mom and all of that to essentially recruit people. As we've heard, she has over 175 people in her downline, so that's a really good amount of people to be making her money. So here's the first screenshot. Oh, she does look cute, oh my gosh. I'm sorry, but pregnant women just always look so fucking cute. I'm like, yes, so she is clearly posing in front of her caddy. The next thing we have a post from her, she goes, I just don't think it's for me, quote unquote. I know you thought it too, and I did too. But what is it you don't think is for you? For me, it is everything I thought it would be required of me to be successful in a network marketing company. Cold messaging people, being a salesperson, spending hours on my phone, having to convince people to buy from me or join me, having to promote something I didn't truly love or believe in, dedicating my social media to shampoo, until guess what? An old mutual friend, Blank, sent me a video Video I made talking about my favorite makeup products and she said you realize you're already doing this right and she showed me her team blank team what I saw was a community of genuine authentic ambitious women a product that transforms a generous comp plan Bit generous comp plan what are you faking what you faking Okay, the resources to G-R-O-W, your mindset, your business, your social media, and your confidence. What kept me away for so long was that I had to become something I didn't want to be. But instead, I transformed into the most confident, resilient, badass version of myself possible. And I'm not done. This year, I became a mother, a single mother. And in a time where I could be paralyzed with fear of how I'm going to provide, I am not afraid. I'm not worried about asking for time off work for doctor's appointments or leaving him after giving birth in order to pay my bills. In December, I'll give birth to my son and pick up my paid for caddy. I literally got to trade in my car and car payment for a safe luxury vehicle that Monate will pay for. With an extra 500 to 5,000 a month, a paid vehicle, an empowering community, an opportunity to work when and where you want be helpful for you. Let's chat. You guys know I don't read horror stories until I read them. Like I read them on camera. This pisses me off because an MLM is full, especially Monate from my experience and what I've seen is all about cold messaging. Being a salesperson, you are spending hours on your phone. You are convincing people to buy from you, which is why Monate 
reps are like the top reps to be on their social media platforms talking about objections and telling you what you're missing out on and talking about the haters that don't believe in the community. So yes, you are nonstop having to convince people. Uh, you're also having to promote something. You may love it or not, who knows? And then you are deciding to sell shampoo on social media. She then hasn't even given birth and is already trying to use the single mother card, which is just so, uh, it's so annoying. She then was so undescending when she said, or leaving him after giving birth in order to pay for my bills. Yeah, I'm sorry, but adults, not even just in the US, in the world, have to pay bills. And do you know how we pay bills? Most people work. Whether you own your own business, even you fucking work to pay your bills. I'm so annoyed and no income claim or and no income disclosure should definitely make income claims because yeah, 100, 500 to 5,000 would mean a lot, but am I gonna make that based on bonus income disclosure statement from what I remember? The average person- First off, this is the funniest photo of my face, but what I meant to say was the average person makes $183 annually from Monet. It's like 89% or 90%, I'll put the screenshot up here, but yeah, not a lot of people make money. We've got more screenshots though. We're gonna listen to them all. She goes, the best CBD in the world is back. This duo has been an absolute lifesaver for me these past few months. I am trying to be better about not taking pain reliever when I'm in pain, especially now that I'm prego. So this body oil and body butter in addition to the chiropractor changes the game. So she says, because of this, and I'm curious if there's any studies on this oil. Who knows, she said CBD, but apparently it relieves neck tension, leg cramps. So is it's from Monet. Monet has CBD? Gosh, I didn't even know that. They Are they coming out with like new shit every week? They just want to be a jack of all trades, okay, in their MLM. But oh my gosh, she said it's going to soothe, razor burn, give you an at-home massage. CBD is an at-home massage? Hey girl, you do you. She, oh yeah, she showed a photo of it. It's the skin cushion cushion skin cushion 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 by monate body butter and body oil so yeah she is using the fact that she's pregnant to essentially sell a product and then we have a couple more photos this one says did you know i'm always accepting new biz partners and vip customers yeah yeah, we know. If you want a hair or skin transformation, I would chat with you and recommend a custom routine specifically for the results you wanna see. Want the ability to make additional income wherever and whenever you want? I will connect you to the priceless resources available exclusively to my team and help you reach whatever financial goals you have, whether it's a free caddy to quit your job and stay home with your little one or make an extra 500 to 1,000 a month. The best part, there's no catch. There's no auto shipments, no sales requirements, no inventory, no monthly fees, none of that. Does shampoo, I'm trying to like read it differently if y'all have noticed. <laughs> I'm trying to make it funny, but she goes, just shampoo that restores the health of your hair and a comp plan that gives you the freedom you're looking for. My DMs are open. Message me if you want a consultation or more info on starting your side hustle. You'll be glad you did. Ah, oh, yikes. So that is pretty much all. I just, I don't have much to say about that story. Thank you so much for sending it to me. It just, yeah, is annoying to see her already kind of promoting that. You can kind of tell she's starting to gear her social media towards moms and moms who want that extra your income, moms who want to work from home and things like that. So it's kind of slimy and skazy. Editing Deanna here. I really quickly do want to mention this because I didn't mention it in my video, but I want to make it known that I find no issue with gearing your social media to mom life or dog life, school life, or whatever it is that you're going through, especially for moms. I find that being a mom is so precious and especially being a single mother, stay at home mom. And so many moms need that support from social media. I personally don't find an issue with that. And I feel that's beautiful to be able to share. So for this woman to share that mom life, I feel is amazing and incredible to share that with your social media. I personally just don't like seeing single mothers being pointed out in the hopes of recruiting them and making money off of them. So that's more my issue. So I hope people didn't take that wrong the way I was saying things. I personally support this mom and everything she does from here and on into the future. I just don't like the way that she's doing things along with not putting income disclosure statements in her post, but essentially insinuating that you can make that amount of money if you were to join her team. So that's kind of what I had an issue with. So let's move on to the next one. This one I've never heard about. So <laughs> this one is about Nutramet Medics. Never heard of the MLM. Don't even know what the MLM is about, but I am excited that we're getting newer MLMs that I haven't really heard about, talked about on my channel. 
channel. It goes, Nutramedix. This story is a bit jumpy because I picked the worst parts out of my time with Nutramedix. Otherwise, I would have literally waffled on for forever. You can totally use my name. Okay, so it all started in August 2016 with a first 10 people to comment on this post will win a free facial for you and three friends. Plus, you'll get a free $50 pamper pack. Facebook post. Someone on my timeline shared, and I thought, hell yeah, I love free stuff, but me too. Lucky me, I was the third comment. So I got a message and I gave her my number to set up our little pamper afternoon. 30th of August comes around and I have some friends over and I've put out a little spread and I'm expecting a good afternoon. She was two hours late to start with and then once she got there, it became the most awkward and embarrassing situation I've been in. The quote unquote facial was basically just her washing our faces with a general face wash and then moisturizing after. She half-assed this all while talking about how great her life has been since she started with Nutramedics and how, I'm just gonna say Nutra, hopefully you guys are okay with that, since she started with Nutra and how she just got her free car. Everyone just sat there awkwardly looking at me like I had tricked them into some weird sales pitch, which is exactly what it was. But she wasn't pitching the product, she was pitching the lifestyle. I should have known better, but after everyone left, she asked if she could talk to me about how I can turn this into a great side business to earn a little extra income on the side to help pay my medical bills. As she started going through her speech on how great Nutra is, my partner at the time came in saying he had to go to the hospital because he cut his foot open and he needed stitches. This woman didn't even let me get a word out before she turned around and said, call your mom to take you. Taylor is busy learning about her amazing new future, but my husband needs to go get stitches at the hospital and you have the audacity to fucking tell him to call his mom, get out. The door, yeah, but you see it, it has a knob on it. Take the knob, twist it, and, and leave. That's what I would've said. She said, this woman didn't even let me get a word out before she turned around and said that. My partner and I were both stunned and I was honestly too scared to leave. So all while I was stressing about my partner in the hospital, she had managed to sign me up and I had to pay 250 you oh my gosh, or oh my gosh, $250 starter kit. Even though she knew I was struggling with money and I was having to see specialists that my healthcare or Medicare didn't cover. She told me I would make it back easy and then some. I live in a pretty small town so I didn't have much to work with. I also suffer from severe anxiety so cold messaging people would literally make me vomit. She's putting a trigger warning in here. She said trigger warning mental health issues and suicide attempt along with mentions of surgery. So if you are someone that gets triggered by that, skip through about two minutes in. She said, jump forward a bit and I am in the hospital on suicide watch as I was obviously going through a hard time. She told me that this was a great time to message people because they would feel sorry for me and it would also keep my mind busy. A few days later, I had my attempt after my partner had left me and was transferred to a mental health facility in our and a half away from home. So I had no one there with me when I woke up, but this lady who called the facility, I still don't know how she knew I was there and said she was my aunt and wanted to speak to me. I was shocked when I got on the phone and heard her voice. She told me that I had to stop the toxic thoughts entering my brain and to send her a daily positive affirmation. She also suggested I put a rubber band around my wrist and snap it every time I feel sad and that will train my brain into positive thinking so I could focus on getting my business back on track. I go her for a while as I wasn't ready to focus on myself. I'm going to pause it for a second. That is so fucked up. Like I have nothing else to say about that. I do want to say to the person that sent me this, I'm so sorry you went through that and I hope you are good now. I need like a update. How are you doing? Because I know none of that is easy and fucking snapping your wrist with a rubber band is not going to just cure someone of their mental health issues. It's just not. And that's so disrespectful. One, the first thing that she did, I wouldn't have paid for that. Like say my husband's, you know, had to get his foot stitched up. I would not sit there. That's just me though. But I know everyone's different. Some people feel really bad and that's how a lot of really nice individuals get roped up into an MLM because they feel bad and they'll buy a product just to get someone to stop talking to them. And it's a really sad cycle, but I find that really disrespectful that she did that. Then the next thing she does is she calls the facility where you're getting help and then tells them that she's your aunt and needs to talk to you. And then when she's on the phone she tries to give you some fucking mental health advice when she's probably not educated at all because no mental health it like <laughs> mental health person professional would tell you to uh put a rubber band on your wrist and you're just gonna be fine like uh you're just gonna be okay like that is so one of the worst things i've ever heard an mlm rep do 
After getting my life back on track, I had to go in for my three third endometriosis related surgery. She sent me flowers in the hospital with a little note reminding me that I can work my business from anywhere. This bitch. Considering I was messaging family, absolute nonsense on my morphine driven state, I don't think it would be the best time to try and sell things. She then accessed my database and started calling past clients asking them to place in order as it would help me out with my recovery. I quit that day and never gave it a second thought until I recently had another surgery. She said it would be the perfect time to rejoin because I was sitting in the hospital doing nothing. I chewed her out and told her how inappropriate it was and blocked her. Looking back, I never made a single dollar all my commission money that I could only spend on Nutrisite to buy products for my kit. So in the end, I ended up with a bunch of expired products that I didn't like and I had to end up disposing of. I feel bad for the two people I recruited. I did apologize and even offered to pay them back the $250 for their beginner kits because I felt responsible for dragging them into this. A lot of other stuff happened, but like I said, I picked the worst of the worst. I think they may have changed their business structure, but my time with them definitely wasn't a stress-free side hustle. That was promised. Love you and your channel a bunch. Thank you for putting helpful info out there. What? I can't make this stuff up. I can't make it up. This is some of the, like, this is someone's story. And I got a DM the other day. I talked about it at the beginning of my previous live stream where I was reacting to MLMers TikToks and Instagram reels, but they always say, oh, well, you know, not all MLMs are that way, or you just had one bad experience. Oh, wait, no. I've never heard of anyone having a bad experience. Like, literally, someone told me that the other day. Like, oh, I've never heard of someone having a negative experience, only positive ones. It's like, no, you're just looking for the positive ones. You're not out there looking for the negative ones because I can reference you to about 21 MLM horror stories that will total up to probably like 24 hours of content for you to watch because there are such disgusting, horrible stories. And this is just one pure example of it. That should have never happened. That person should have never said any of the things that she said. And Oh, she was just in such a vulnerable state. So that could be another factor for why she even paid to sign up. Because like I said, I being who I am, I would never sign up even if I felt bad or wanted to get the person to leave me alone. But someone who's in such a vulnerable mental state can easily get roped up into things like this because a lot of the times they're not thinking to, oh, should I do my research? Should I look at the company? They're just like believing what the person's saying. And I'm not trying to say that individual's dumb for not researching. No, it happens and clearly she was going through a lot so it's just so sad that people in MLMs don't listen to these stories they don't see what people are out here doing and those in the MLM this chick I hope she's done she need to be fired she needs to not ever work in another fucking MLM ever again because that is deplor that is disgusting let's move on to the next one so this one just says MLM experience Hey Deanna, love your videos so much and I'm so glad I came across them at the perfect time. I sent my experience about two months ago, but it might have gotten lost. But either way, I didn't include my mom's experience, which is by far worse than mine. See, sometimes I don't see them. I'm actually having one of my really good friends, Julia. She's been going through my email. I don't have an assistant or anything. She's semi been that individual for me to just help me out and assist me with during this move and everything like that. So sometimes I don't catch one. So I have a folder in my inbox where I will move horror stories like when someone sends me one I'll move it to that inbox so I can cross it off essentially and sometimes I do miss like miss your guys so if that ever happens resend it to me message me on Instagram and be like hey girl I sent you this and most of the time I'll respond to your DM and be like hey what's the email you sent it to I'll put it in my next MLM horror story so it does happen I'm a human I make mistakes so I am sorry that you had to resend it but I'm glad that you resent it because now I can read it she said I'm Liz by the way you can use my name a couple years ago, while I was a second degree undergrad student, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was a hard time for my family and I as she went through the hardships of that awful, to say the least, disease. She was going through chemo and eventually her hair began to fall. A neighbor who had never associated with us or with any other neighbor for that matter knocked on our door. For more than 20 years that my parents had lived here, she had never ever associated with us. But there she was at our front porch trying to recruit my mom. She said she noticed how my mom had been covering her head with bandanas and she figured she'd been going through chemo and was offering amazing products that would help her immune. Oh my gosh. After never speaking to this lady, she was at my house for five hours. Five hours. 
I could tell my mom was exhausted as she was falling asleep at the table as this lady's trying to sell this shit. My mom, being the smart person she has always been, decided to decline the offer. But a couple days later, here she again, or here she was again, and my mom declined again. My mom just didn't want to take supplements that she didn't know much about that could interfere with other things she was taking. After declining a couple times, the lady went back to never speaking to us again. That was the only time she ever spoke to us. RIP to this lady who I don't even know her name and I'm so glad my mom didn't fall for it. My mom is 100% better now, but it's disgusting how she preyed on my mom. At the time, I just really wasn't aware of what MLMs were, but now that I do, I can't believe it. My experience with MLMs started through Instagram. I received a DM from someone I had never seen before, no idea how she found me, asking if I was interested in her business. My mental health at the time was not the greatest. It was around the same time as that lady tried to recruit my mom. I asked about what it was and she said it was coaching. Now, I was a figure skating coach at the time, damn that's cool, as I went to, or as I was going to college, but I wasn't enjoying it that much. It was mentally exhausting to be working at that place. I used to get my mind off things and just skate. I was still mu- very much into working out and skating and would post a lot about it. So when she told me, I told her I'd just think about it. She suggested I join her Facebook group in which I did. I reactivated my Facebook for this. She talked about how she used to be a teacher and now she was coaching full-time and traveling. I am the most skeptical person you'll ever meet, so of course I didn't fall for it. I don't mean to be rude or anything, but it looked like a tiny apartment she lived in where she was telling me she makes so much money, question mark. Come on now, no. But then I thought, well, maybe she doesn't want a big place to live and would rather travel, She's, which is actually really true. Some people don't want that. They don't want a big house. They could just live in an apartment, like a nice apartment, even if it's small and be happy. She sent me an application so that I would officially join her and get some product. It was some shakes or something. I was in the process of completing the application when it was asking for my social security number and that's what stopped me. I was like, nope, there's no way I'm giving my social security number. I just didn't trust it. She kept DMing me asking me about why I was skeptical and indecisive, but I couldn't get myself to fill it out, so I didn't. She kept messaging me until eventually she stopped following me or blocked me. I don't even know and I really don't even care. I didn't realize it was an MLM until at the beginning of quarantine in March, my best friend asked me if I've ever heard of Monet. I hadn't, so I asked her what it was. She told me it was a company she was thinking about joining. So I was like, uh, okay. She told me that Anna Patricia, a Mexican TV show host, did it, and so she was thinking about it. It wasn't until May, maybe that she suggested I join her. I asked her to explain to me what it was and she told me that she would have her quote unquote mentor so she did join. Oh, that sucks that your friend joined. She would have her mentor explain it to me via Zoom. I didn't want all that, but I didn't say no. So there we are on Zoom and this girl talked so much but explained nothing. She was intimidating and made me feel some type of way that I did not like at all. She asked me where I was working and I told her I didn't have a job, which I was actually embarrassed to say and told me that that's a reason I should do it. And then my friend mentioned to her I'm starting grad school this fall in a psych program and oh her face lit up started asking me what was stopping me from joining that moment. She told my friend to send me some videos so I could get excited about it question mark. I don't know. I just didn't like how this girl was telling me about my mindset and how my mindset was off. They love to say that shit. She was just trying to convince me that I should join. I watched these videos on two times speed, lol, so boring. I ended up doing research of my own and found so much. I came across your videos along with others and I was like, wow. My friend asked me that night what I thought and I told her I wasn't going to do it because of what I found and she told me how I know how it works on my hair and skin if I haven't tried it or how would I know if it works if I haven't tried it. Our relationship kind of changed and I'm so annoyed of her Monate stories to be honest, sad face. It sucks because she even told me that her fiance told her it's a pyramid scheme and she didn't care. She used products on her dogs as well. It sucks because my friend is a new mom away from her family since she moved out of LA to work a corporate job in another state and she wants to come back to LA. It's hard because I can see how much she's spending on these shampoos and ranks or I don't even freaking know what. The toxic positivity she is being fed is so gross. She'll feel bad for watching a movie on Netflix because that's being unproductive, but it's like you just worked a 12 hour shift. She absolutely deserves a movie and more. Like girl, binge watch a whole damn show if you want to. But apparently she's not doing enough and it sucks. 
I hate to see her going through that, and I feel like I've done my part in trying to make her aware of the situation she's in, but there's no changing her mind that I'm just being negative. I'll throw in some hints about mental health and try to give actual positivity, but not telling her directly, and I feel like so far it's been helping her with that. But still, it sucks how much of her time the MLM consumes. Thank you so much for spreading awareness. Love you and your videos. I loved that story. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was a sad one. With her mom and all of that, that was sad. I really hope your mom's doing okay. Y'all, when y'all email me, y'all need to start telling me how y'all are doing now, okay? A lot of y'all will be like, I suffered from this, or this happened in my family, or I got a divorce, and I'm like, how are you? Like, are you okay now? I always want to know, like, how you guys are doing now, so start adding those. We all want to know. Do y'all want to know? Comment down below. I feel like y'all want to know, too, how people are doing now. But with the whole mom thing, I'm so sorry that she had to go through that and you did. And the whole thing that, the actual thing that stuck out to me with that whole thing was the fact that, yes, she, your neighbor who had never spoken to your mom, went there and tried to recruit her. But the biggest thing was the fact that she was there for five hours hours. Your mom was falling asleep. Like that part got me because I know that anyone who suffers from a illness like cancer get exhausted quickly. They're going through chemotherapy and that's not an easy thing. And to have someone in your house trying to fucking be a salesperson for five hours when you just trying to take a damn nap, which you deserve to take a nap after going through rigorous treatments. And it's just, it's really sad that she did that. And then going with your story, I feel like it's sad. You have these best friends, right? And they get wrapped up into these MLMs and it's sad. You suddenly feel like you're losing that friend and I've had it happen. I've made friends in an MLM and I've lost them and it's sad. Also, I hate the whole toxic positivity thing. I hate that your friend works 12 hour shift. Who knows what job, you know, she's working and then she can't even come home and watch a movie. And that's how these MLMs make you feel I've been there. And I'm still, I feel like to this day, trying to get out of that mindset of having to work 24 seven. It took me months after my MLM to actually be like, it's okay to binge watch a show. And now if I can binge watch the game, y'all, it's on Hulu. It is so good. It's like 12 seasons, no, 12, nine, nine seasons. And I'm on like season five in like a couple weeks, like two, three weeks. It's really good. But besides that, I used to feel the same way because you're being told 24 seven, you need to work. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not pushing for your goals? Why are you not hitting that goal? Why are you not doing that? Why are you not buying that? Why are you not selling that? Why are you not working hard enough? And you're being told these things, things that you can't take time for you. You can't hang out with your spouse. You can't go on dates. You can't take Friday night out. You can't go have drinks with your girls. Like you can't do anything. And it's sad because like my girl Liz said, it's like she deserves to. Like if I could sit down and binge watch something and it's sad to just see them get into that mindset. And I just wish there was something we could do. And I feel like you Liz are doing everything that you can do. You know, you're sitting there and you are trying to be there. Even if you're not, you know, getting through to her yet. Hopefully you just being there as a friend and being a light to her and a positivity and you're going to grad school for her psychology, you know, you can help her through that. And that's all we can do unless an MLM rep asks an MLM rep asks for help. And that's a big question I get a lot is, how do I tell my friends or how do I tell my family? And if your family doesn't want the information, nothing that you say is gonna matter, nothing. Whether it's your family or your friends. Now, if it's like my mom, so if like my mom joined an MLM, I'm sorry, but I'll be honest with her. I'll be like, mom, you need to get out of that scam. I would, that's my personality as a daughter. That's how I act with my mom. But not everyone can do that. Not everyone has that relationship where they can just walk up to their mom and be like, you're a scam but for friends and family you kind of have to be there you have to listen and be that positivity in their life and ask them like oh I found this you know information on YouTube or I found some information on the FTC's website um, do you want to look at it I don't want to bother you with it and kind of go about it that way like if you really do want to talk to your friend about that I think that what she did was great to still be there for her and tell her like hey you can binge watch a show like telling her those things are okay but if you do want to give information and ask permission first. Don't just throw a bunch of videos in your friend's face. Don't send someone a bunch of links. 
Because if they don't want to hear it, it doesn't fucking matter what you send to them. That's what toxic positivity essentially is, that they exit out negativity. So if someone is not in the right mindset to actually look at what you're giving them, they're going to yank, they're going to like yank it out of their, you know, imagination. They're not even going to look at what it is that you're sending them. So that would be a great way to start if you do have a friend or family doing it or doing what she's doing, but also, you know, mentioning, oh, I've seen this thing on like the FTC's website. It's no big deal, but I would love if you would look at it. Or if they start bringing up concerns, that's a chance for you to say something or tell them you have a link. Is it okay if you send it that you just care about them? So that is going to be all for this MLM Horror Stories. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. These are my, one of my favorite series. I would say MLM Fails and Horror Stories are my favorite videos to make. So definitely make sure to comment down below which story did you vibe with? Did you relate to one in a certain way? Did you have a similar experience? I would love to hear your stories down below. Even if you have like a really short story you want to put down below I would love to hear it so don't forget to comment and like this video it definitely helps me out also don't forget to subscribe if you like content like this I mostly do MLM content right now but soon I will be shifting my channel and doing a lot more lifestyle videos I'm planning that out as we you know go through the end of 2020 so don't forget to subscribe if you like content like that I upload three days a week Monday Wednesday Friday and I will see you guys on Monday